I've gotten a lot, lot better at like the logic game, but I'm having an issue with when you need to switch the variable with the rule application. Like if Z was in the second place, what would the last two be? Or like, I get confused, I think, on how to diagram it correctly. So I'm trying to replace it and I'm not putting the other variables in the proper place. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like the exact same diagram that I already have and I'm just changing the variable or if I have to go back to the rule itself and like, I'm not, I don't know what it's not clicking, but like I'll get, like I did like a practice test and I'll get this section right, except for those two questions. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So rule substitution questions, also known as equivalent rule or rule equivalency. It's not just switching the variables, it's switching the rules themselves. And that means that the main diagram may not look the same, but you will end up with the same meaning and the same inferences, but it could appear different. Okay. Um, so I guess then my question is, like I did one, I'm trying to think. It was kind of like the, the one that you have, basically it was saying like, um, yeah, just when you got to switch the variables out and you have to re-diagram it. I think my thing is, I'm, I'm not getting like a full grasp or understanding like where or how much of the, like does the rule, all of them change? Like you just don't go back to that at all just because it's saying that they have switched or you just look at that specific rule change. Well, this is the last question of the game. So there's nothing to think about going forward. This is, once you do this question, you're done with the game. Put it aside. But, okay. but with the rule, you're, swat, you're removing the old rule and you're re inserting or replacing it with the new rule. And so the old okay. rule's gone, the new rule's there. And the question is, would all the other previously valid hypotheticals still mm -hmm. hold? And meaning, is this no more limiting than the original because if the new rule would take would render a previously valid diagram invalid then it's too restrictive and couldn't be couldn't be correct and then on the flip side if it allows something that previously would not have been possible then it's too permissive and also then is not correct but from the for the opposite reason oh okay i think then that's probably what my issue is i think i'm looking at the rules and I'm trying to mesh them together. So it's making me think like I need to still insert everything and try to fit the rule in somewhere like the new one. Okay. That makes a lot of sense now. Thank you. Cause I, I was kept doing questions and I'm like, why am I not, it's something is missing. I don't understand like what's the problem, but um, with logical reasoning, I am, <laughs> I don't even know the word right now. Like, I'm not, I don't even know. Like, I don't think I'm struggling, but the sufficient um, and assumption questions, they really have me, like, overthinking. And I don't really want to, I don't want to overthink, but I don't understand. Like, I'll read the answer, and I'll second guess what, I, what was right. Because I think I'm thinking too much about what was said instead of the entire, like, stimulus in this in whole. Um, so it, it's making me like double back and thinking, like, I don't know what, why I'm doing it, but like the question about, um, when it's comparing to, uh, two, two different, um, opinions and you have to look at it. I don't know, like the one in one of the masterclass videos I was watching, um, when I was reviewing a question, it was so simple, but I don't know why I was more stuck on. Um, it was the one about the portrait that was like so simple, but to me, I was thinking it was more so about, um, them trying to have the resemblance. Like, I don't know why I be, I'm so stuck on the words. It seems like than the actual issue at hand. I hear you. And I, All right. I don't really know what to, to differentiate the two. Like it's, it's kind of getting tricky on, but it's not, I don't understand. Like when I took the test though, like when I'll be doing the practice exam, it doesn't seem that hard sometimes. So I don't know how to stop that differentiate. Ugh. 
I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I would say it's never, as you know, it's never about the topic. It's about the structure. It's the method of reasoning. It's the argument. And so if there's a, like, if there's a terminology, if there's a key word that you don't know, of mm-hmm. course you can, maybe they'll define it in context or maybe they'll define it elsewhere in that passage and you can find the meaning and then just substitute it whenever you come across it. That's one okay. thing I'll say. Next thing I'll say, conclusion. Start with the conclusion always. Okay. Start with the conclusion, then the evidence. And from there, you can see how they go about making their argument. And you can be sure that you're not getting too wrapped up in the details or the specifics. There's yeah. occasionally even filler in the stimulus. Yeah, I um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I find myself trying to like overly exert the words to make sure that I'm grasping a concept when it, I feel like it is just right there. But of course, the fillers in the inside kind of get me stuck with just trying to explain what's actually going on or what they're really asking me to figure out. Um, but I'll try that the other way around. <laughs> Hopefully, I get somewhere far with that. Um, Reading comp, I'm not really sh- like struggling with that. It's just trying to get my like my reading speed with the computer and everything. Like just trying to get more comfortable with reading and understanding like um, the passage and then trying to get to the answer in enough time so that I can get to whatever's next. Um, just because I think, again, the same thing I'm kind of doing with logical reasoning, the overreading is kind of hurting me. I think the more I review the passage in its entirety and I'm like, uh, I'll like second guess it instead of just going on ahead and just trying to see like, so my brain is kind of like false starting in a sense because I'm not really just going at it. I'm like stopping the pause break or something. So I don't really, I don't know. I guess that's like a mental thing. I just need to calm down on. And because the test is like coming up, I'm like, oh, this is like, why am I acting like this right now? But I don't know. Well, you've got to go in with a purpose. So when you're jumping into a reading comp passage, what are you hunting for? What are you reading for? What, mm, how do I say that? Basically, just to kind of figure out what the synopsis of everything is, like what, what the topic and the conclusion would be. And then from there, I guess, just looking for the question at hand, like whatever the question is asking me to look for. Gotcha. All right. So synopsis, summary, to me, that could be content related. So I want to keep you focused on structure related. What's the author's main point? What's their conclusion? What are they driving at? Why do they write this? What are they trying to communicate? If they could only leave one thing, what would they leave? If they could only say one thing, what would they say? And so look for where they're expressing their opinion or they're telling you why they wrote this and look okay. for that. Aim to walk away with that. Don't get too wrapped up in the details. And remember, I, when I think synopsis or, or summary, I think of that from a content perspective, like you could, you could look for like the topic sentence of each paragraph, right? Or the ending mm-hmm. sentence of each paragraph. And that would give you a taste of that possibly. But I wouldn't go that approach with it. The main idea could be buried anywhere and it's where they express their opinion. So if they say something is fortunate or something is unfortunate, that would be one indication. Okay. Ooh, that makes sense too. <laughs> That's so crazy. You could be doing all this and then two seconds somebody explain it different. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think for the most part, it's starting to really make a lot more sense to me. Um, just like, you know, reviewing like the videos and watching the different things and then trying those online, um, the practice tests that um, they have online. Um, they've definitely been getting a lot. It's starting to make a lot more sense compared to when I first started doing this. But um, I think I just probably do need to focus more on that because I am just swayed on another way of reading. So um, I think I should probably try my best on that part because I I know for a fact, like I'm not solely looking for just the main purpose, which is more than likely why I'm dealing with just the overthought process in it because 
I'll go back and reread and be like, well, why am I not? And then I'll read the right answer and be like, oh, well, that made sense now. Like, so I guess that's kind of a thing. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's really it. Just trying to make sure that I'm reading properly. And not to say I'm not reading properly, but, you know, like just reading for the right purpose. So, um, do you, I have a question, though. Do you know, like, when they'll post about um, when we can register to take the test? For which test? Um, July. July? I mm -hmm. mean, July LSAT scheduling? Yeah. Yeah, it should be happening actually sometime this week. Okay. So sometime, sometime this week, they will send you an email telling you that you, it'll be this day that registration opens. Okay. And there's actually, this is a little tip for you, there's actually a way to schedule your time before that. So, really? yeah, so if they tell you, and this worked for the May and June LSAT flex, no mm -hmm. guarantees for July, but since they kept that loophole open for J June, I think they'll keep it open for July also. And the way to go about this is simply to the day, the calendar day that they sell, they tell you, so they might say, let's say Wednesday at noon, LSAT flex registry scheduling opens. Mm -hmm. That means that maybe sometime Wednesday after midnight, you could go onto ProctorU's website LSAC will have already created an account for you on ProctorU using your LSAC registered email address. So if you reset the password on that ProctorU account, then you can log in and schedule the time before everybody else. Oh, yeah. So another thing, I just want to just say this to you because I don't know. I just, so my birthday is the day after the, the day before the test. But I read on their website that you could either take the test, the test on the 12th or the 13th. Now, I feel like I could take the test on my birthday if it's in the morning. But I don't know what those... Do you know, like, the times that people have taken the test, like, in June and May? Yeah, so the times are 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time in 20-minute oh, wow. increments. So you can do 9, 9 a.m., you could do 10 a.m., you could do 10.40, uh -huh. 10.20, any of those oh, are fine. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think I'll do that. Then. It's a good way to spend your birthday. I mean, well, what's nice is that later that night, yeah. you can rest easy. Yeah, I know. That's because, and that's what I was saying. I didn't, I read it because, you know, when you click the LSAT website, it says July the 13th. But when you go back and start reading, they say you can take it as early as the 12th. So I was like, well, maybe I could just kind of, get it out the way like just to have it off of my brain like that because it's just one of those things and then like my birthday I'm gonna just have to be like incognito the whole day to try to just keep my mind steady because everybody's gonna be trying to call me and talk to me and I'm gonna just be like guys I don't really want to talk today like so yeah if I could take it on my birthday in the morning but if it's in the afternoon I'm gonna just have to let that go but if I could take it as early as nine that would be great because my mind will already just be ready to take it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, especially if you're yeah. going to be getting interrupted by people throughout the day. Just put your phone in airplane mode, turn it off on silent, knock out the exam, and then you can rest easy and party. You yeah, know? okay. Yeah, that's a good thing to know. I didn't know like the time frame slides or whatever. So that's cool. Ooh, yeah, this is getting interesting now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're in the home stretch. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, So would it be better for me to just, I guess finish this week out the way I've been studying and then like start the practice exams more on um, like the next two weeks since that's like the wind down time for the test or? I mean, at this point with a couple of weeks out, I'd be focusing on doing full length exams and reviewing them mm -hmm. and full length, okay. for the full length for the flex is only three sections. Yeah. So I would just be doing maybe one or two timed flex exams a week meaning mm -hmm. just remove one of the logical reasoning sections and do the other three. Just do those and review them. If you notice weak areas, focus on those or two on the side. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's really all the questions that I had. Um, I'm definitely going to revert my thinking process on these questions for when I read. Um, and I guess if I have any 
other questions i could send you an email or definitely if when this works because i'm sure it will because uh, all this other stuff has been working that you've been telling me to do so when this works i'll definitely let you know like how far it's gotten me because i'm probably going to take another test tomorrow just to kind of see where i'm at and um yeah i think that's it though awesome yeah definitely keep me posted if you need anything at all but i think oh. i think you're in a good place and to just take those insights on the different areas we talked about and start applying yeah. them. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure, Capri. Have a good All one. Right. I'll talk you to you too. soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.